grant categories where the development in biomedical engineering is viable and necessary. First of all, the educational, even if it's uh, academic, either it's professional. In advertisement or marketing, you can uh, promote your stuff. In system installation in medical environment, so you don't make any grand mistakes with the topology. Uh, and engineering design options in industry, you don't waste money, you can uh, try out different setups uh, and geometries, so it's kind of useful. And in the education, probably using a 3D virtual reality environment as a part of training and methodology allows students or application specialists, the workforce of every country, to experience an entirely new side of training. In real life scenarios can be implemented as normal functioning, maintenance, and probably the quality control, which is the most important part. Uh, education, the biomedical engineering students or application specialists can be trained and evaluated on the physical principles, which the functionality of the medical equipment is based. This type of technology breathes life back into traditional computer-based learning and reawakens the enthusiasm in users who are used to this technology in other circles outside of the training. About the marketing, it combines the high-end technology and creativity of the graphic designers and uh, the, and the technology that already exists and can give an opportunity for them to reboot the marketing problem that many companies and uh, corporations are already facing. The interactive combination of the 3D geometries, the internet marketing is an effective commercial strategy. And about the system installation, uh, you can simulate the motion, either, either the location, so you can avoid the unexpectable, unexpectable errors in the biomedical engineering field. And as an example, you could have collisions, so you, so you could break something, and if it's an MRI, a magnetic resonance imaging machine, we're talking about a five-ton machine, so you could kill somebody. Uh, but the design, uh, simulation modeling gives you the opportunity for system designers to test different design options uh, so you can have a better placement. So the design specification, specifications are met by using virtual prototypes rather than having just physical experiments that can show you a uh, particle collision. You just need to see the proper geometry in the proper space. Let's see some biomedical engineering systems to get a better picture of how complex it is and why do we need to build it. Uh, this is an X-ray scanner from Computing Tomography. This is the show-off of a company. Um, it's rather complex. It, it's consisted of uh, many different uh, parts inside the uh, inside this uh, machinery. Uh, in uh, biomedical engineering, we always have three basic parts. The first one is the primary effect, we might have a human body which might get, might get a radionuclide so it can get to the cancer, let's say. Uh, the radionuclide might get photons outside. We must trace them, so we must have a detector. The detector will get an analogic signal. The analogic signal will be turned to a digital by us and a lot of computations come in order. So, this is a demonstration of an, uh, this was a demonstration of a company, but this is a real life uh, engineering maintenance uh, of a Greek hospital. That's uh, the real situation. The basic problem in this, uh, in this era is that uh, an engineer cannot possibly come uh, and, and pay a visit to any hospital or find an engineering system in need to learn how it's inside. And the students almost never find out how a machine really is inside. Even the application specialists don't know how it's inside. That's why we need to invest in creating... What's happening? Nothing, probably. Connection, Connection is lost. Oh, here we are again. So, uh, the most difficult part in, uh, in the biomedical engineering education is to show them how the system is really, how it really works and how it is practically inside. The problem is that in the most uh, facilities, in the most systems, you cannot operate inside the machinery. Uh, I'm a biomedical engineer and I've been to hospitals. It's very difficult to see the system from the inside. So, 
This is another one modality, is the positron emission tomography. As you see, it's very complex. It's, uh, for, it's very complex and it has many different modalities inside. You have uh, the things that uh, square around, there are the detectors, the electronics are from the inside where nobody really understands how they work and why they have all these cables. You have to be an electronic technician about that thing only. So you combine four or five different people to consist one system. This is another realistic photo of a pet. So, what's the aim of this project? The development of a virtual laboratory which describes 10 medical instruments of biomedical engineering and their related physical processes. So, what do they require from us? To have an educational tool, to be easy to use, not to download something that I will, uh, so the user will, will make a setup of something, an installation of something, something very easy. So they ask, it's a web application, you just click and the browser plays, something like that. Uh, accessible via, via internet for every student, self-guidance through the 3D world, so you cannot make him, uh, you can restrain him, let him guide himself through. Interaction with the system environment, of course. And uh, let's see the advantages of Blender and why I did this in Blender. We have compatibility with other applications. Uh, let's say you can export your dot blend to a dot 3ds or a collab or something like that. You have Python, a very, a very, uh, a very good language because it's object oriented, and you can connect different modalities. Let's say you can connect an Arduino or a CNC or a 3D printer with with Python. Uh, it's open source. So you, ev everyone can use it and there is no company coming to arrest you with handcuffs if you do something or ask for money for that. Uh, you can invest as much as you want to it and you can upgrade it the way you want it and you can bring it to your own shape. It's a user-friendly GUI and it's really easy to learn, to learn how to use it since I'm eight, nine months uh, uh, graphic. I'm trying to be, I'm an amateur a graphic designer in Blender. And the Blender community is pretty interactive. You can uh, ask them questions, uh, they can respond you back, and this is a big thank you. Um, and also, Blender gives you high-end capabilities uh, to make realistic models. So, it's the software for the job. So, what was the workflow? The workflow was uh, achieving a well-in-depth knowledge of biomedical engineering machines, since they are composed from a large variety of different parts different scale. That means that you have to contact four different scientists or four different engineers or many different persons. Uh, so, and achieving a world in-depth knowledge of the biomedical engineering. And, starting with the smaller and the most complicated parts, the first geometrical approach was done in Blender. I made the 3D structure in Blender using basic meshes, curves, I was an amateur, so it was the most easy part. Uh, the most uh, difficult part, except taking the knowledge of the machine and the system, was to export from Blend to 3DS, because most of the um, geometries, tools and stuff don't work in 3DS. The 3DS is an old one, is an old expert, and uh, you don't you cannot make a big script. It cannot be very large. Uh, so you can't make very many a, a giant amount of curves, you cannot make a giant amount of meshes, you must be restrained. But this is also good, because if you make a web application, you cannot put tons of uh, data uh, in it. So everyone can open it easy, uh, and it can run smoothly in any computer. That's very useful because we're talking about students. They cannot all students cannot afford a Mac. Um, finally, the complete mesh is exported, as I said, in 3ds, so it can be applied as a class .as3. I used Flash code uh, in order to make the uh, web application. So I made the interactions in uh, .as3. Uh, I developed the Flash code, uh, but the geometry was from Blender. Um, and let's see now, let's see uh, this one here. We have a workflow, 
uh, how it was properly done. You can see by the left side a proper clinical uh, MRI. Uh, you can see in the center it was uh, created in Blender in a native form and uh, we have a, a, a simple, a very simple GUI in the right side which is the uh, browser part of uh, it's just a browser you click the, uh, the you click the external link it connects you to the server which I've uploaded all this stuff and uh, you see the GUI of our of our uh, application what you really can do in the in the most right part you can walk through the MRI you can see any part you wish and in the bottom uh, right in the bottom right uh, section you have the ability to take off parts. I made that in, uh, in the flash code. You can delete parts and you can insert parts. You can, uh, you can have a guide before you put them inside there. You can have a guide which uh, will uh, guide him through what he should erase first so it can get the, the skin part by part and understand what he's taking out and what he's seeing. <laughs> Imagine if you have a car and suddenly the, the cylinders come out. If the mesh is outside still, you cannot see the cylinders. So, um, you take it uh, part by part. Um, well, so we can see some results here. This is an optical microscopy um, system. It's, it's a general bio-emission system, but there are many modalities in that. We can see in the center uh, the numbers two one three five six this is the main modality of this system uh, the b uh, the bottom structure at the five is where the mice is coming and there is a very simple engineering uh, mechanism of how to proper hold the mice when it is in anesthesia this is a very simple uh, machine to hold the mice but still uh, an engineer must make it so it's very useful to construct something that can go from uh, a system that's meters to millimeters with just one roll, mouse roll. That's the nice thing about Blender and 3D. Uh, this is the top view of the uh, implementation. Uh, the top view, if you see it from the, uh, from the above, from the two, you see it from above. This is a top view from the implementation, so you can probably understand why, if you, if you play this, uh, you can understand why fixing the rotor in the islands is, uh, you can understand why it zooms out and zooms in, what really changes, why these things are moving. And this is uh, a aesthetic photo I've taken, which shows the, the small and minimal parts that hold the mice. So you can go, you can go zoom in and understand how it's made. These things we're talking about are micros, micros, uh, comparing to the to the whole system, which is about something less than a meter. Microns are very small, so you can understand how it's made. And a photograph doesn't really help if you don't see it operating. You can understand it. This is a spect. The spect is used in uh, uh, nuclear medicine. It's uh, one of the most basic parts of the hospital when we're talking about medical sciences and nuclear medical sciences. And that's a 3D uh, prototype I've made in, uh, in Blender. And then I took it to the crappy environment of 3DS so I can make it a web publication. Uh, and this is uh, how probably you can see it. Uh, the good thing with uh, most devices and systems is that you can see it operate. So uh, you see the cameras, they can rotate, you can see a maintenance problem, the rotors are not rotating, that means that probably something is not going out, something is going wrong, why should it that happen? So you can uh, implement more things in the educational process. You can uh, make uh, probably uh, some uh, questions so while the simulation is done you can pop up a, a question you can have an answer for possible answers from the downside keep all these uh, save them in a database and maybe evaluate the student or the engineer it's uh, pretty interactive 
Uh, some of the most complicated machines of our uh, science are now interactive by being separated to partitions because uh, when you have uh, the whole spec machine system you said you saw before we also have the detectors the uh, power supply we have uh, made it in parts in partitions you cannot only see the whole machine and rip things off the ripped things off are also uh, separately demonstrated if you wish so um, we separated them in partitions. You can peer through the exterior and the interior. You can take uh, you can take a sneak peek where it's in reality you cannot. Uh, in addition, there's a turn-based disappearing tool, which uh, it's kind of nice. Um, and you can also uh, make some exercises on them, uh, so you can prove your. Uh, educational part. So, what are the future plans? We make it, we want to make it a standalone Blender project because uh, in 3DS and in Flash Code you don't have much flexibility as in uh, Blender. You can make tons of things and I'm still an amateur, I can learn a lot of stuff yet. Uh, for instance, I couldn't make very complex uh, uh, meshes because uh, 3DS is not, it's, it's not being extracted in 3DS. Um, and we can, we can also expand uh, the variety of the systems uh, that requires feedback from the students, that requires feedback from engineers, from the scientific community. Uh, we also need the knowledge bases from the engineers because it's very difficult to open a system. I made one year to find an open MRI because the magnetic resonance imaging machine, because the magnet, the force field, it never, it's never down. You have three Tesla all the time up. You cannot go close. The magnet will pull the camera and make an accident. It's not that easy. Um, so, if we have the funding, maybe we can, exp uh, we can um, improve that. Uh, and at this stage, the virtual laboratory is an educational tool, but it can be upgraded to a professional, maybe a commercial, may, maybe a specific impl uh, implementation for a facility if they want to make something uh, to educate or either promote something for anyone's needs. Uh, but for, um, uh, for universities there can always be a, a later version so they can use it to educate students since uh, I'm in for education and I learned from open source so I want to give I want to give to the open source community. So let's make some acknowledgments here. Uh, my, let, I want to thank my uh, my professor George Ludus. He was the organizer of this uh, of this project. The Blender community for the tutorial guides and its and its person that has uh, volunteered in creating something to educate someone. Uh, the creators of Blender because they made a terrific job so far and they still do. Uh, my institution who was the establishment where we made all this and of course uh, you for your patience. I left uh, many minutes for questions because all the scientific uh, experiments and applications mostly are useful where, when there are questions and discussion. So I'm waiting for your proposals. So, uh, very okay. Were you not able to get uh, some original um, plans for the machines? Because uh, I think that these are close uh, commercial products, this MRI machines or whatever. So you are basically doing something like uh, reverse engineering? That's, that's the job you are doing? You can do either reverse engineering, either you can do an engineering from the start, build something from the start, but not in this project. Uh, Blender gives you the opportunity to create meshes, to create yeah, objects. Ask what you do. That's what I do, basically. Mm -hmm. I create meshes and objects. But in this project, we wanted to make uh, a standard version of a system so somebody can educate himself and guide himself through this software uh, to learn the most basic uh, f structures of a system which is very complex and he cannot interact with in real life only as a patient. And still as a patient, 
unfortunately you don't have many opportunities to see the environment you're very uh, you have uh, other things to think about what you've broken your leg for example so any more questions Just to follow the, the question before, could you not get the plans from the from the manufacturer? No, nope. rather than because, uh, uh, no. rebuilding. And also, at what point is the the simulation of the of the functions? Like, can you do you have all the the controls and uh, can you simulate the amount of information you get and uh, all the other? Uh, things that uh, you actually do when you w operate these machines. I can gather data, I can make data, and uh, since it's Python controlled, I can uh, probably store any information or apply any mathematical or physical model that can be applied in Python, and that's quite nice. The point is that it's not physically verified, so I cannot make simulations of uh, physics experiment, that's my background. I used to do simulations for nuclear medicine and uh, interactions of photons and uh, subatomic uh, materials. The thing is that uh, it can be interactive with the students, you can get data from the students so you can learn if the educational course was useful and uh, you can implement anything you wish but it requires good programming skills and uh, a high um, educational status because uh, you cannot uh, use everything in Blender and uh, in Blender in Python and to be and it can be related to the physical process uh, for instance you can make something look realistically good but it doesn't mean also that it will operate in real life the same way you cannot pred uh, predict everything it's a lot of different there are different worlds the visualization with the real structured data yes So could you could you in 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 detail yes tell me what's the different to blender so what what do you offer do you offer models of uh, crts or uh, what what what's the framework oh what's the framework um so what what everything is sh shown i could do in blender if i have these models but what what you did what where I can I can join in or I my, mean, my point is I, I I got it my point is that um, everyone can do it the problem is that uh, the companies of biomedical engineering they're not giving away their uh, the structures because uh, this is the commercial you uh, Siemens for example or Philips or General Electric cannot give away their um, their structures and their and the inside of the machines because uh, this is the way they build it if they, if they give it away uh, someone else will build it and maybe cheaper and there will be a marketing problem <laughs> uh, the problem is that you also have to know what you're making so you have to combine the scientific community with the blender artists uh, so you have a better result, either I, either educative, even uh, promotion, even in marketing. And this is a call for every uh, scientist and everyone with a scientific background. If you ever made something in Blender, it would be nice to uh, introduce it to the community of Blender so uh, we can possibly work out, we can uh, work something out. It's, uh, it's really nice to see people cooperating in, uh, in an environment as Blender and uh, I'll personally make a call through Blender artists uh, to make uh, in, this, in this conference to have a small, uh, I don't know, one hour, whatever ton is uh, uh, wants us to have uh, just a small talk, flash talks of scientists that they've made or they want to make something in Blender so people can have job opportunities maybe or 
um, they can uh, improve their um, they can improve their skills in uh, you know imagine it's a different thing imagining things and uh, making a, a very not so well illustration and it's a different thing understanding how to make it. The how to make it is a very difficult thing. How to create a mesh, how to create a... but in order to be educational, not just to create it. If you make lots of details like shadows and lights and things, uh, it distracts you. It's an educational tool. So. So you said you built some kind of like web application. Uh, uh, could you could you present this uh, to us sure. if there sure. if there is some time left? Sure. Uh, what what this looks like uh, and uh, how you can maybe take apart your I am your 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 machine your your imaging machine. Sure, you. Uh, we have one minute left. So, is there any question? I will search it while. I agree that it's uh, probably uh, quite difficult to get the real plans from the companies, uh, but there's also too much detail. So you need to explain the different functions and different parts of it, and these are known because they are the same for all the machines. So you have to implement not a specific machine, you have to implement the concept of an MRI machine. So that's different. So <clears throat> I think you can, can do quite a lot if you, if you understand how an MRI machine works. Or a, or a C, uh, CT machine, or whatever. It's the most difficult part to understand what it is consisted of and how it works. It's the most difficult part. In every display, in every virtual world, I think the most difficult part, as an amateur, it's my personal opinion, it's the most difficult part is till you reach to the point that you know what you want to build. Still, there are uh, medical physicists at the uh, operating the machines, and they are very well trained, and they know how the machine works, and they know conceptually what is going on, and that's what you want want, want to convey. So you have to talk also to, to those people. Medical physicists most of the times don't know how it's inside. They know how it works, Should but they I don't know how it's inside. inside. But there may be different between the Netherlands and the other ones. But then you have the biomedical engineers, and that's my group. That's the problem, you have to combine many people for a big project. So. I think I found the site, so we can see. Let's see. We can check which one, the MRI, here we go. This is now flash? Yes, this is flash. <laughs> you just click, you just make one click and the flash initiates. Uh, it says uh, loading, uh, please wait. <laughs> it was a Greek software, so of course I will translate it if uh, an institute wants it, uh, <laughs> I will translate it. I don't know why the model is not loading, I can go to another one, maybe. Stop, close the torrents. The was going before, so oh, it, 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 it was going? Oh, okay, no problem. No problem. Just go back. Oh, okay, sure, sure, sure. I think I got fluorescence somewhere like here. Uh, here we go. I think this one's, this one should be normally functioning. So, I hope they don't have server problems back in Greece because this is embarrassing. Oh, that's nice. 
That's very nice. So this is one setup of uh, a basic, uh, of a very basic orthogonal uh, laser, which probably can give you a laser uh, beam, which will touch a very uh, special chemical solution, uh, which will be um, which will go to a state which photons comes out. Why photons comes out? This is 30 minutes talk. <laughs> so. Um, this is a very easy way to explain why uh, this chemical solution by this um, laser pointer source gets photons out because people cannot understand why uh, basically engineers cannot understand why uh, biomedic biomedical en engineering also uh, has uh, uh, the chemistry part and the biology part, but we don't need to know in explicit detail why uh, these things happen. We just need to know um, how we get, photons get out. Something happens, photons get out, that's it. We just need to visualize it, we got it, that's it. We need to make the machine, we don't need to make the chemistry. <laughs> you, you have to be... Uh, you have to be... Uh, Quite simple about it. So, what? Oh, stay at one. Uh, stay at one. Of course. Sorry for that. I just want to, you know, you know, I want to flash between some different projects. Okay, I want flash. This is a photo multiplier. Its basic concept is to. Uh, when photons struck in the photosensitive area, which is up here, the photosensitive area, which is at the top, uh, electrons come out. Sure, sure. Okay. Um, there was a call, so I could show something. So it's okay. I can I can shut it down right now. Uh, photons come come struck to this photosensitive area. Uh, I, if I had a mouse, I could. Pro pro probably show you a lot more. We can uh, we can use the GUI to dis uh, to disappear some basic geometries to show uh, when the uh, photon strikes the photosensitive area. When the photons uh, hit the photosensitive area, we'll have um, electrons coming out uh, from the from the from the other spot. So the electrons can be stacked up to the cathode. There's a very tiny uh, slit where they will all pass through. This is a, uh, a very con a very difficult thing to uh, get all the electrons together, stacked up together. This is the, um, the blizzard-like multiplying electrons state where they bounce from one side to the other and we collect them at the end. So this is our analogical signal. Uh, as I said, it's not difficult to make the big mesh uh, it's difficult to understand how it works because uh, they don't let you understand it. Since Tom is the <laughs> standard, I'm, uh, I'll, I'll thank you again for your patience. I'll thank also Tom. You still here all afternoon, Tom? Sure. All evening? Sure. Yeah. No, it's okay.